Hey kids, how about a little extra, extra magic hour? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the Extra Magic Hour podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova and Park Hopper John. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Extra, Extra Magic Hour, an Extra Magic Hour show we do just for you guys, because you know what? You deserve it. Yep. We love our Patreons. We appreciate our Patreons. We want to do something a little extra, and then we want to do something a little extra, extra. So for some of you, it might be a lot. For others of you, it's not enough. So enjoy them at will, my friends. (laughs) Uh, So You have the play button. Do what you want with it. That's right. We just put it out there. If you consume it, great. If not, great. That's fine. Hey, I, uh, uh, Saturday I met with uh, uh, two of our Patreons, uh, Corey and Feline, uh, over at the Starbucks at Disney Springs. Man, I hate that I couldn't see Corey over there. Yeah. So uh, they are from uh, Seattle, Seattle, Washington. Uh, and they came down. Uh, they were visiting with some families. And uh, yeah, it was good to good to hang out with him. Uh, she just signed up. He's been a member for a little while. So, uh, and then there's a new one, Michael. Uh, thank you for also signing up, Michael. So, hope you all are enjoying it. Uh, is that Michael N? Yes. yes. Yeah, uh, Michael N uh, is a friend of mine. Actually, we bu- oh. we bumped into each other a while ago, and he's been a long time listener. And uh, a while back. We missed out on getting one of the magnets, and uh, they had an extra one. They let Park Hopper Sid oh. have it, so that was very sweet of them. So nice. Glad to have everybody in. Not only the new folks, but uh, all of our great yeah. Patreons. We yeah. appreciate you so much. You have no idea. Uh, and as we were we were looking at buying some new equipment this week, I'm like, man, thank God for our Patreons. Yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, there has been. A tremendous amount of updating going on mm. at Walt Disney World. It was actually kind of a slow news week because of all the stuff they just announced. It's like, well, what else do we have to talk about that we yeah. haven't said? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go through some of the updates from Walt Disney World that we think that you need to know because there's a couple of them that's going to really impact you on your next visit to mm-hmm. uh, Walt Disney World. Unless you're local, you, you're kind of going to be a little bit less impacted because it's like... You're there all the here. time. Yeah. yeah. So what's the first thing? I've heard this rumor, Tony. Yeah. Hey, they built another planet. Did they? <laughs> Disney's in the planet building business now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so after several weeks of cast member, pass holder, media, travel agencies, everybody got the preview. They finally opened it up to the public and said, you know what? That's probably good to go. This is show ready. So uh, they opened up the gates of hell. Uh, literally, and uh, it was crazy opening day. I, I was shocked, but not shocked. <laughs> right. That uh, first of all, all right. So here was the weird thing. This is what I heard: cast members that were working that day were to report in at one a.m. Now, you're saying, well, isn't that early, Tony? Yes, considering the park was not supposed to open until six a.m. that day. Oh. So that was way ahead. Now, uh, I heard that there were reports that were people uh, circling the studio parking lot at 3 a.m., but Disney security was not letting them in. So they just kept driving kind of around the block uh, until uh, Disney would let them uh, come in and park. I could just imagine the conversations happening in the cars. Oh, oh God. Don't yes. you understand what's going on today? <laughs> Am I going to get in there? Uh, so I am sure they had uh, 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 some Orange County and state troopers, uh, you know, over at the bus area so that nobody could get in that way. I'm sure right. it was pretty well secured. Uh, you know, cast member entrances were all blocked or very well secured. Uh, anyway, so so then they started letting cars in. People started uh, 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 lining up as early as, I guess, 3 a.m. when they finally did let them in. So, uh, rather than trying... Uh, oh, and I heard the walkway, you know, where the boat drops off, went, like, yep. all the way uh, to the boardwalk. There was people lined up as far as the boardwalk entrance. 
<laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> because those people didn't need a car if they were staying in any of those resorts. They can line up anytime they want it. Right. <laughs> so I heard that line uh, went clear back uh, to the boardwalk, which is, I think, a quarter of a mile from the boat dock to the boardwalk. is about a quarter of a mile, I think. That's crazy. Uh, so finally they started letting people in earlier than 6 o'clock just so that they can take some of the pressure off. Uh, you know, start getting them through the security and getting them through the turnstiles. So then they started cramming them down, you know, Sunset. No, not Sunset. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hollywood Boulevard mm-hmm. uh, to start lining them up to go into, uh, you know, Gates of Hell. Uh, so that all happened uh, the other day. Uh, Smugglers Run uh, hit some uh, uh, really incredible <laughs> wait times. Uh I was seeing 300 minutes. There was maybe even more at some time. Somebody uh, was telling me it was 400. I said, I, I guess it could go to 999 if it had to. <laughs> and I think that's when Disney called in all of them and said, hold on. Let's, uh, the land is getting too packed. Let's go to boarding groups. So uh, if you opened up the My Disney Experience app and said, boop, if you want to get into Galaxy's Edge, you got to click here, get a boarding group, and then uh, they would text... Uh, or SMS uh, uh, notify you when your boarding group could get into the land because the land was even at capacity. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the pictures I saw, I don't know if you saw them too, people were literally shoulder to shoulder. There was literally no place to walk. It was just crammed, packed with people. You know, everywhere you look, it was just a sea of humanity. So uh, so that was the the opening day. Um, but that didn't last all day, though. No, it didn't. It was very short-lived. I think, you know, once we got around to the uh, the noontime mark, yeah, it just went right off the edge. It was like there was I, no boarding groups anymore. It I went down rumors. to about 180 minutes. Yeah, I heard rumors that they were very disappointed with how that all transpired. They were kind yeah. of hoping it would be packed all day. all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say the same statement I've been saying over and over, and John is probably sick of hearing it. Why am I going to make the trek to Galaxy's Edge when the second attraction is still not open? I know. that Disney, you have to understand this. If I have X amount of dollars, I'm not making two trips. I'm making one. And I'm doing it all and getting the hell out. Right. uh, That was it. Uh, that's a struggle. That's a struggle for Disney. Disney does. They don't. They don't think uh, sometimes. You know, it, 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 we're not all locals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Some of us don't live here. I, I mean, we do, but I, I think a lot of us don't. <laughs> right. Um, and I, you know, I, I, I hope, because I also heard mm-hmm. the B plan, if Star Wars Galaxy's Edge doesn't work. Listen. <laughs> I've heard now uh, the Disneyland, I think, and, and even our number two, is in the billions, in the billions to build a land, a land. You know, mm-hmm. like, let's say three billion. So they spent six <laughs> because they have two of them. <laughs> I don't think they're going to. Uh, they're going to try and sell this real hard before they change their mind on their $6 billion B plan. <laughs> there are a few things that Disney could do to make this way more palatable mm. for Star Wars fans. Okay. Uh, and it's very simple. Mm-hmm. Go back to the original characters. Because True. they've done True. they've done, they've done done such a good job of like... We're on a new planet that you've never been to on the edge of the galaxy. And look, mm-hmm. there's the Millennium Falcon. Mm-hmm. There's Chewbacca, mm-hmm. which is great. Mm-hmm. Uh, even Hondo. Mm-hmm. Hondo's great. Uh, but you have to be a fan of the animated series. Yeah. But most people don't. They're expecting to see Han Solo. Right. They're expecting to see Leia, Luke Skywalker Luke. and Princess Leia. Yeah. And and even C-3PO Lando PO and R two D two. Yes. Yeah. And I I don't understand Darth I know, Vader. I, I think it's because of uh some sort of uh you know, money. There's a, money there's issue a, paying uh Lucas money. But I, <laughs> I thought that Luke and I've heard that and I guess there's some type of a 
there was a loophole in there. But I thought that Disney bought all that. Except for the merchandising rights to the first three original films. Lucas still owns those rights to all that merchandise. So if you're going to make something with Han Solo on it, money goes to the uh, George Fund. Well, I think before Disney flips that over to something different, they should really, really quantify, you know, paying those characters because they had no problem with it during Star Wars weekends. Yeah, yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. so kids, I would I would belly up that one. Right. Because that's a billion dollar investment. Yep. That they're they're not giving the fans what they want. Yep. And that's that's the problem with Marvel. That's the problem with Star Wars. They're not yep. giving the fans what they want. Right. Um, anywho, moving on. Ready to move on? Sure. Next up, there's some new Fast Pass tiers that are taking uh, taking effect mm-hmm. uh, at Hollywood Studios as well. Mm-hmm. And it's all related to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. It's <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, Hollywood Studios has overhauled their Fast Pass Plus tier system, making the following attractions all tier one Fast Passes, meaning guests can only select one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror makes sense. Uh-huh. Rock and Roller Coaster mm. makes sense. Toy Story Midway Mania makes sense. No, Sleep- that doesn't. That one doesn't. That's what? an old. That's old. Yeah, but it's always been tier one, hasn't yeah. it? It is, but it's old school now at this point. Well, that <laughs> those top three make sense because those are the ones that everybody wanted to ride. Mm. Slinky Dog Dash makes sense. Yes. Everybody wants to ride the new roller coaster. Yeah. Alien Swirling Saucers does not make sense. Mm-mm. That is not a tier one attraction. But because it's one of only three attractions in the land, mm-hmm. it's a tier one attraction. That's right. So, here's the thing. Uh, Star Tours is now a Tier 2 attraction. <laughs> you've, been, you've been downgraded, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> Star Tours. Yeah, no, nobody, nobody cares anymore. <laughs> uh, uh, getting a Fast Pass reservation for the only other Star Wars attraction in the park has got a whole lot more difficult. <laughs> Uh, guests will likely be looking at making fast pass reservations for rides while they are visiting Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And as previously announced, Fast Pass Plus reservations is not available for Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. So, so you can't get a fast pass to Smuggler's Run. Hmm. Hmm. Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster, Toy Story, uh, Slinky Dog, and Alien are all tier one. Yeah. There's only one tier two. Right. Name another attraction in that theme park. Little Mermaid. <laughs> Attra- <laughs> Muppet. Yeah, that's not Indiana a- Jones. Yeah, all all of those are entertainment attractions. Name ride. Uh, there aren't any. <laughs> there aren't any. Uh, I just thought that was fascinating. Yeah. Thought it was fascinating. Yeah. Um. Oh, what was the thing I was gonna say? Oh. Uh. So right now they're, they're not doing the fast pass uh, for smugglers, but they do have a single rider line. So if you don't mind your, you know, if you're traveling with three, four people, you don't mind all going on separate things just to get on it. Uh, the single rider line certainly will right. be way faster than the standby line. If you don't mind being an engineer, yeah, take take the single rider yeah. line, yeah, <laughs> or a gunner. <laughs> I would mind being a gunner. Yeah. I, I, you know. Uh, but it would seem to me that if you've got a party of three, yeah, you could be a gunner. If you got a party of four, you're going to be an engineer. Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So uh, if you don't mind that, uh, just so that you can see it, uh, uh, definitely take advantage of the, the single bar queue. All right. Uh, next up, uh, this other thing opened at Epcot. Uh, huh. <laughs> this small little festival. <laughs> what? <laughs> They're like, hey, Galaxy's Edge over here, nice big shiny thing. But also, on the same day, they opened up Epcot Food and Wine just to say, hey, listen, if you're really not interested in Batu, come over here to this other thing we have called the festival. Uh, so this opened up. Uh, this is going to be uh, bigger than ever, 87 days, running all the way right up until Thanksgiving, 
November twenty third. August 29th to November 23rd. <laughs> I'm not surprised this just doesn't, you know, Flower and Garden ends and Food and Wine starts like the next day. I'm, yeah. I'm surprised like it. it's not that to that point yet. Uh, have Have you been, I mean, I know that we were there on Thursday, but we weren't yeah. really there. Yeah. Uh, have you been no, to Food I and Wine? No. So yet. we were there, we actually were there today, mm-hmm. and we walked all around World Showcase. Right, and it just seemed like Cramped. there was no. Well, <laughs> it's hurricane stuff. It just seemed like there. I know that there's the same amount of marketplaces, mm-hmm. but they've done such a great job of spreading them all out that it feels like there's hardly any any kitchens. Really? Let me explain. Huh? We had a nine twenty fast pass for soaring, right? Right. Where they the uh, the entrance for the uh, Circle of Life mm-hmm. movie yeah is one of the uh, it's the the uh, bean to whatever bean the to deer deli yeah the, yeah the deer deli thing that's one of them in the land in the land inside the land who's who's gonna find that a uh, great question <laughs> but they can't have it outside because all the chocolate will melt sure so. We were walking through, and they had a couple other places available hmm. in Future World. Yeah, there's a fire grill or something. Right. ESPN right. game day. Right. Yeah. So let let's say there's thirty. Hmm. Uh. So there's thirty. There's three that we saw. Four technically. Let's mm-hmm. say four, because you've got the refreshment port in front of Test Track. Right. The refreshment port. Yeah. There's the the also Af- the one in that garden on Future World West too. Yes. The the uh, African, yep. Uh, and then the uh, uh, oh, there's one other one I had in my head. Oh yeah, uh, Fife and Drum. Okay. The coffee cart. Mm-hmm. And uh, the one in front of the American Pavilion, which is the beer place that always right. sells the the. That's count them ten out of thirty, that are permanent attractions. So you're only bringing in. Mm. Uh. 20 extra marketplaces, yeah. extra kitchens. Yeah. And I don't, and I wasn't looking for it, mm. but I don't remember seeing anything in America. And I know that they've got the lobster roll and stuff over there. Yeah. But they've done such a good job of of spreading them out. Mm-hmm. It was almost like they weren't there. there were, I saw more merch places. Mm. Like, mm. The, like, there's no festival center this year. Yeah, no. So, like, Cutco knives. It was there in the festival center for yeah. some unknown reason. Yeah, was was hawking their stuff outside by Japan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we just felt really yeah because weird. what they should have done was rather than making the Odyssey the come visit Epcot preview, they should have made that the festival center, like they did last year, and just put the preview thing somewhere else. <laughs> well, the Odyssey's closed. Yeah. That's not. That's nowhere near ready. Well, no, yeah, no, because they're turning it into the Epcot 2.0 preview center. Right, right. So you know they're missing out on a yeah. space there. Yeah, and the other thing is becoming you know play. So. Right. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Interesting. Uh, speaking of Epcot, oh, oh no, this one's yours. Go ahead. Okay. Speaking of Epcot, as Tony, uh, there was, <laughs> there. There's the good side about the new announcements coming to Epcot and the bad side. The good side is, is wow, look at all the really cool new stuff. Yeah. The bad side is, is like, holy, look at all the stuff that's going away. <laughs> Epcot is now uh, <laughs> a construction zone. <laughs> so Epcot uh, construction of tomorrow. <laughs> if, if you really want to know what's being uh, – okay, so as you walk into Epcot – the whole front is messed up. They took out yep. one side of the stones, and now the other side is in full construction mode. Mm-hmm. And, and outside the entrance where the trams would go is yep. in full construction mode. Yeah. And then, right as you crest the hill from uh, Spaceship Earth, as you walk into Spaceship Earth, start going up the hill, from that point forward, from guest relations or the art of Disney forward, all of that is getting ready to go away. Yep. Uh, Club Cool, 
Mickey and Minnie and Pluto meet and greet, Joy and Sadness character meet and greet, the Baymax meet and greet, Fountain View Starbucks is going away, mm -hmm. uh, Colortopia and Interventions, mm -hmm. Fountain of Nations is going away, mm -hmm. Art of Disney is going away, Penn Central is going away, mm -hmm. and Club Cool mm -hmm. is going away. All of those two little rings mm -hmm. and all the stuff inside is mm -hmm. going away. Uh, the character... September uh, 8th. Yeah. Yeah. I was getting there. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that starts September 8th. Uh, the characters Mickey, Minnie, and Pluto are being relocated. Joy and Sadness and Baymax will be meeting guests at Epcot after se September 8th. Well, uh, excuse me, will not be meeting guests yeah. after September 8th. While Disney has confirmed via social media that Club Cool will return in some form, nobody knows when that will be, and no timeline or potential replacement location has been given. And and I know a lot of people care about Club Cool, but the one that everybody's losing their brains over? Starbucks. Starbucks. <laughs> they can't have a park without their coffee. <laughs> Oop. Can't have the park without their coffee. I know. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> I must have coffee. Right. <laughs> I have three kids under five. I need coffee. <laughs> Never let the children outnumber the adults, kids. That's yeah. my John's little secret to going yeah. to Disney. Or, or the number of uh, cups of coffee outnumber the kids. <laughs> oh, got that right. Uh, and then the last item is Up. A Great Bird Adventure is to close next week for more refurbishment. Uh, so back in 2018, Disney's Animal Kingdom changed its Flights of Wonder uh, show at the Animal Kingdom to include characters from the movie Up alongside the show's uh, cast of birds and change the title to more IP friendly such as Up, A Great Bird Adventure. However, it looks like these changes have not been very popular with guests and Disney is going to be reworking the show yet again. As a result, uh, while these changes are being implemented, the show will close uh, from September 8th to September 14th, uh, with the reopening uh, newish show planned around September 15th. Although nothing has been confirmed, it seems likely that the up characters may remain part of the show, but their roles may be scaled back. <laughs> uh, you know, some people like change, some people don't like change. And then something should just never change. I don't know if this was one of them. It was not in my top five shows. I'm not a mm. bird person. So I could certainly walk past this show without going, oh, my God, I have to go see that. You know, in Nemo, totally different. I have to go see that. Uh, bird show, not so much. So I don't know, but I, I, I don't know. There is a... Uh... Maybe their there, IP's biting them in the butt. I was going to say, there's a very fine line between, like I said with Star Wars, giving the characters what they want mm -hmm. and getting the most bang for your intellectual property butt. Right. Um, when it comes to characters, it, it's either a meet and greet or you're in some type of an attraction. Mm -hmm. Nobody's complaining about the Mickey's Philhar Magic. Mm-hmm. But when you try to shoehorn in a character, even as lovable as Doug and uh, Kevin, Kevin, it's it, it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. And you know, you want the edutainment to be high quality, but that it's tantamount to me of of sticking. You know, you're on, you're on the safari, and then you come around the corner and. All of a sudden, it's ma sedenga babadissima ma, and there's a uh, there's an animatronic baboon yeah. holding up an animatronic lion cub. Right. That that felt like what's going on over there at the bird show. Mm. You know, uh, just do what you do best. Create amazing experiences. Right. And right. don't don't try so hard, Disney. Yeah. That's it's just everything that they're doing right now seems to be like trying so hard. You know, mm -hmm. Batu is great, but it felt forced. Yeah. You know, that, Universal is doing the same problem. The Hagrid's motorcycle adventure thing right. is forced. It feels forced. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and they're trying so hard to 
to, to cram as much into what we already have. Here's a crazy idea. Why don't you let your Imagineers run loose and, and, and open a fifth gate? Right, right. Let's be done with it. Open a fifth gate. You know, and and who gives a crap what intellectual property is in there? Just tell a great story, and that's what that's what we're missing. We're missing some great storytelling. Yep. yep. But I get off my soapbox. All right. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, anything else you want to add? No, I do not. All right, guys. Thank you so much for being our patreons. We cannot tell you how much we appreciate you supporting the show uh with your your contributions as well as you're just you know we love getting emails from you guys comments from mm -hmm. you guys let us know what you'd like to hear you can always leave us a comment or shoot us an email at disney parks podcast at gmail.com uh we will be uh, live here in a little bit as we record this on monday night uh so if you're not doing anything on monday nights at 8 p.m you can always come find us live uh and as we like to say around here if we don't see you in the parks uh, we don't see you online we'll see you in the parks The Disney Parks Podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. All Disney Parks, attractions, lands, shows, event names, etc. are registered trademarks of the Walt Disney Company. Disney Parks.